Queen. Hi, and welcome back to the inside of my head, which lately has been full of a devil horn borrowing spider dominatrix who spits acid. She's an intergalactic serial killer. She gets her legs broken off a whole bunch. She loves chaining people up, and she demands that you call her my queen. She's been a scientist. She's an expert tracker. And in certain continuities, she's a mind reader. Not necessarily the superpower I would choose. I'd choose flashlight hands. Everybody else be choosing flight and stuff. Why? What are you going to do if there's a power cut and your and your phone is out of juice? I'll be like, behold, two thousand lumens from the palms of my hand. Um, let's start with IW, shall we? One of the fearsome beast transformers hailing from the planet Eucharist, which was founded and seeded by Onyx Prime and his Titan Sheila. She was part of a tribe known as the Fate Weavers, sometimes called Fate Spinners, seers of sorts, who could predict the future of any given individual by probing their minds. Think of it like a Vulcan mind meld, only Spock would have to bury his goddamn fingertips into your cranium. Probably not the most hygienic thing. Exceptionally for a Fate Weaver though, she studied science and engineering. In particular, Nemo surgery, which is kind of a robot psychology where your shrink literally plugs into your mind and can manipulate and even erase painful memories. As she studied those, she began to find the ceremonial nature and the whole spiritual nature of the whole thing pretty airy-fairy and set about finding a more scientific approach. So she started abducting and experimenting on batches of unwilling participants, dissecting their brains and I quote, trying to calculate all of the potential variables in the Cybertronian mind. Oh damn, all of the beast modes you could choose, this guy went with Squirrel. No more nuts for you, Squirrel boy! Once the horrors of her procedures were discovered though, she became a pariah before being cast out of her tribe and even kicked Oi? off of her planet. After her expulsion, she wandered the stars for an indeterminate amount of time, probably continuing her horrific research before she resurfaced again on Cybertron and ended up working for Starscream, who was leader of Cybertron at the time. Now, I just did a deep dive on Starscream, so I won't go into all the details on him, but basically he was looking for Swindle's body so, so that he could put Bruticus back together again. So he sent out his new ally into the Ioconian population to probe all of the brains she wanted and track Swindle down. Thing is, this process was often fatal, so she left a trail of dead bodies in her wake. As well as that, he had her tinker with the other Combaticons' minds while they were recovering in hospital to make them believe that they had always been loyal to Starscream and therefore do his bidding. As well as that, he wanted them to forget that it was him and his terrible decision making that was the reason that they were all in the infirmary in the first place. She helped Starscream invade Windblade's mind when she was taken over by the Titan Vigilant. I mean, I used the word invade, but he was actually helping her and was eventually arrested for her involvement in his crimes. In 2019, IDW rebooted their Transformers continuity and Arachnid was back a fugitive criminal wanted by the Colonial Council security forces who again used horrific experimentation to fashion herself barbaric tools of death and destruction and incorporated them into her chassis. She went into hiding on a remote asteroid where she was recruited by Thunderwing and given the task of creating working copies of powerful ancient artifacts originally wielded by the Primes. One artifact in particular was the good old Enigma of Combination and to replicate its powers, she had to create this huge machine in the asteroid. And after she was tracked down by security forces, she battled with the Technobots and a couple of others, pretty much holding them all off by herself, then detonating a huge energy blast, which pushed them back into it, forcing them together into Computron. He wrecked the machine up and would have destroyed the whole lab. And by wrecking this machine, he would have destroyed the whole colony. So Arachnid told Thunderwing to eject part of the colony to destroy the Combiner, to prevent a total loss. In the Aligned continuity, the Covenant of Primus said that she was part of a sub-faction called the Arachnicons. Her biggest involvement was in Transformers Prime though, where her earliest known involvement was killing RC's first partner, Tailgate. Tailgate! And yes, making RC watch. <laughs> Then, as the Cybertronians abandoned their homeworld, she put her expert tracking skills to use as she took to hunting species for sport and collecting their heads as trophies. Damn, did you clock this handsome dude? He's got exposed brain, protruding eyeballs on exposed stalks, but the best is the hair because that's like it's completely receded, yet he's still rocking a mullet. He's got a scarlet. Before she crash landed on Earth and took a helicopter for an alt mode. She seems to scan this though, so not sure how she ended up looking like this. Here she continued her bitter rivalry with RC, including various schemes to murder her human partner Jack, including killing his mother after Arachnid had allied with Mech. She sadistically gave the boy till midnight to save his mother, a grand total of six minutes. Then once he found her, Arachnid turned around and told him that the deal was for him to rescue his mum 
not just find her, then offered him the choice whether he wanted to see her eviscerated or burned to death with acid. So she set about cutting his mother to pieces. Obviously, RC dropped in to save the day and the two battled before Arachnid made a hasty retreat. What I find amusing, though, is that it was hearing about the horrors that Mech had inflicted on Breakdown that made her seek them out and lure Silas into the woods to make a deal. She buried Breakdown by grabbing onto him and then burrowing down into the ground. This was while they were struggling over the polarity gauntlet. Before Bulkhead fused them together and she was forced to crawl back to the cons and rejoin them, starting a sort of rivalry with Starscream for Megatron's favor. She found out that Starscream had kept the location of the crashed Decepticon ship called the Harbinger a secret, which was important because it was carrying an artifact called the Immobilizer. She forced Starscream to give her the location, but the weapon was destroyed in a scuffle with the Autobots, something that she would try and blame Starscream for. You can see how these guys are natural rivals because they're just as treacherous as each other. He wasn't around to defend himself as he'd been captured by the Autobots, and Megatron was furious that, in Starscream, the Autobots now had access to a whole bunch of con intel. But even so, Megs made her second in command. Then she tried a coup of sorts, when Megatron left her in charge while he went to talk to Unicron. It appears our leader has abandoned us. After he'd been gone for a suspiciously long time, she ordered the Decepticons to relocate to a planet called Regulon 4, and it was only loyal as ever Soundwave who protested, and he and Laserbeak put a beat down on Arachnid. When Megs did show up again, she hid. She saw through Megatron's ruse when he sent her on a tracking mission with Dreadwing and Breakdown, supposedly to use her tracking skills to find yet more ancient artifacts, but she smelled a rat and realized that Megs had sent the big fellas to kill her for trying to usurp him. She made fun of Breakdown's eye patch, causing him to snap ah! and blow the whole ruse. Ah! And in the ensuing battle, she managed to web Dreadwing to a tree and completely dismantle Breakdown. This is where she found an Insecticon and found out that she could control him, setting it on Megatron as soon as she got the chance. And after a battle with RC, she found a whole cave of them before time began. Now, whoops, whole cave of them, giving her a powerful new army. Unfortunately for her, though, RC trapped her in one of the Insecticon stasis pods. No! allowing the Autobots to take her prisoner and Megatron to take her Insecticon army for himself. The bots put her in storage, basically, and when the cons attacked and destroyed their base, they reacquired the pod, but didn't revive her. And you guessed it, put her in storage. Then later, when Silas became an Energon vampire and this genius decided to mix Dark Energon into this horrific mess, he inadvertently created a plague of Energon vampires. And, well, he broke open the stasis pod and tried to drink her Energon. She kicked his ass, but he did infect her with the plague. Out of spite for having been left in stasis so long, she ordered the Insecticons to kill all of the Decepticons. But Soundwave managed to teleport them all to a remote moon of Cybertron and stranded them there. No! Quickly becoming an Energon vampire herself and left with no other sustenance, she had to drain her Insecticons one by one. And that's the last we saw of her whether she died from the eventual lack of Energon once all the Insecticons were drained, or went into some kind of hibernation, we'll never know. Okay, spoilers for Transformers 1 coming in 5, 4, Ah, uh, you get the idea. Nothing is known about her origin in Transformers 1, but she was less of the self-serving femme fatale, more of a brutal enforcer who seemed pretty dedicated to Sentinel's cause, acting both as a bodyguard, but also employing those lethal tracking instincts to hunt down anyone who opposed. It's not explained why she went along with Sentinel's betrayal of the Primes, but knowing her, it was probably pursuit of power that caused her to act against her own kind. We'll also see in a second how it's a pretty good outlet for her sadistic tendencies. Her Cybertronian alt mode was more of a multi-rotored armored gunship, which I thought looked brilliant. And obviously most of the spider stuff was gone as well, as that just wouldn't make sense in this context. So no acid spit, no webs, no burrowing, and no devil horns. She did have feet like those like running stilts. What are they called? Do they have a name, these things? She led a group of death trackers. Death trackers being these kind of elite V-cons that Sentinel had as his own personal army. There were gold ones, there were black ones. She led the black ones. She managed to subdue Alpha Trion, a powerful prime. And even though this guy was old, this is no mean feat. I love the juiced unicorn vibe. Yeah, she dragged his ass to the Sentinel and then smiled as he executed him. She also seemed to quite enjoy watching Megatron get the Decepticon logo carved into his chest. But what really surprised me in Transformers 1 was her speed and reflexes that were off the chart in combat. The one bit that springs to mind is when she blocked a bunch of incoming fire with her back rotors and then spun around and cut a bunch of guys in half. And it all happened like in a split second. And I'm not saying she was slow in the other continuities. She just pulled some crazy maneuvers in this one. As elsewhere, she had an 
array of weaponry, but mainly used her spider legs as lances which she thrusted at her prey in a flurry of lightning quick stabs. But her monitoring capabilities were just as lethal, with multiple side view cameras running along her temples that could hone in on targets miles away. And then there was also this array of, I don't know, what, 50 cameras in the back of her head? It's funny because the first time I saw her head opening up like that, I thought it was, she was going to like eat Optimus's face. The first time I saw this, I thought this was an odd thing to do at this point. Like she's in the middle of fighting Orion. It seems like a weird time to show him the cameras in the back of her head. But I think what might have happened is he punched her so hard that her head got stuck facing the other way. So she had to open up these cameras just to be able to see him. This was ultimately her and Sentinel's undoing, however, as the Autobots realized that she would have recorded Sentinel's incriminating activities that they could then use as evidence against him. But the one virtuous aspect of this incarnation was that she was pretty loyal. I mean, from what we saw at least, compared to the other continuities where she was pretty damn treacherous. But in TF1, I felt like she would stay with Sentinel till the end. Like I was honestly waiting for the moment that she bailed when things turned against them, but it never came. We didn't see what happened to her in the end. The last we saw of her was this. So I hope that TF1 gets its sequel so that we get to find out what happened to her. Anyway, you guys, let's leave that there for now. It's been super nice to do a shorter video for a change. Let me know what you guys want to see next. I was thinking most powerful female bots or maybe a video about triple changes, I'm not entirely sure yet. I was also thinking about doing unanswered questions from TF1. I definitely have a few, the main one being how the fuck that beacon got inside Steve. If you've got any, make sure you let me know and maybe I'll feature them. Massive thanks to everyone who's taken the time to watch and support my channel lately, even more so to anyone who's become a member. I'm going to be cooking up something special for you guys pretty soon.